back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Copley in Washington, D.C. Take a look at that Russia Today interview. Take a look at my essay on Major Hassan of Fort Hood, a patsy in a drill gone live. Because that's the thing. Uh, all the eyewitness accounts say everybody thought they were in a drill. Uh, there's a good chance that Hassan also thought that he was in a drill. But whether he was a uh, criminal intent psychopath who wanted to kill or simply a patsy dupe who didn't know what he was walking into, He's a patsy, and that's the main thing. And all the stuff about, oh, how come nobody connected the dots and all this. We're going to have a, uh, a board of inquiry with Togo West and uh, a couple of retired admirals. Well, <laughs> I'm sure they'll do whatever they can for the Gates uh, Pentagon. But the fact is the guy's a patsy, and that fits into the context. right? We had Zazi, uh, the guy from uh, Flushing, Queens, and Denver, who supposedly wanted to blow up New York City. We got Major Hassan. We're going to have the KSM Khalid Sheikh Mohammed Uber Patsy trial with four or five other super patsies going on trial with them. We've got uh, a bunch of mosques being seized uh, because they're allegedly the property of Bank Meli of Iran, therefore the Pastoran Revolutionary Guard and the Alavi uh, Foundation. There's a lot of uh, ferment about that. There's a, there's a mosque here in Potomac, Maryland, which is actually a school, seems to be quite peaceful. They're being seized. So that's going to stir up quite a hornet's nest. You've also got uh, this uh, character, Pat Robertson, right, the religious demagogue. Uh, we have a new governor of Virginia. I've talked about him, McDonnell, a reactionary, with his, uh, his also his uh, Cuccinelli, his attorney general, an ultra-reactionary. Uh, Robertson says that... Uh, Islam is not a religion, but it's a very destructive social system. So all kinds of things going on to gin up a big wave of hysteria, hatred, Islamophobia, Limbaugh running to get into it, Hannity, Levin, all the rest of these clowns uh, pushing Islamophobia. So I think uh, this if you put this all together, it's time to be on the lookout uh, for something in the Gulf in Pakistan, Pakistan, not far from the Gulf, something in Gwadar, maybe, that would lead to uh, to some big shock. Because, they again, Wall Street believes, whether it's true or not, that when you get the big shot, shock, everybody takes the flight to quality, the flight to safety, and that means treasury bonds. Now, they're also worried because Saudi Arabia and other countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council are actually in the process of creating what amounts to an Arab currency unit. Uh, that's a big problem for them. The other thing is whenever countries uh, resolve their differences peacefully, that's a problem for the Anglo-Americans. Take a look, for example, at the meeting uh, yesterday, I guess, of uh, Russian Prime Minister Putin with the Ukrainian Prime Minister Timoshenko. This is now uh, the natural gas pipeline question, <clears throat> and it looks to me like they have basically solved everything, the uh, U.S., and British, Brzezinski and company, will not, repeat, not be able to gin up a crisis over the natural gas. Now, Yushchenko, <laughs> Yushchenko, the NATO puppet, the beneficiary of the color revolution, was on the same day meeting with, um, with uh, Saakashvili of Georgia, and uh, Putin uh, said, I hope they have, the, they don't, be, not so formal that they wear their ties to dinner, because when you go and, and uh, have dinner with Saakashvili, you don't know what he's going to do with his tie. He's on, on film uh, eating his tie, so he doesn't eat what he orders, but he, uh, he eats his tie. So look at all that. Now, shifting gears, the other thing, big defeat for the, uh, for the uh, international finance oligarchs, the Copenhagen Conference is looking more and more like a failure. Let's not get overconfident. We have got to make sure that this Copenhagen Conference is torpedoed, that it's blocked, breaks up, uh, flies off in uh, a thousand directions, block it, uh, gridlock is the best thing. In terms of the build-up to the Copenhagen Conference, we have, of course, had the Barcelona Conference, uh, where most of the African delegations walked out, and then the, wa the walkout was sponsored by the non-aligned group, the so-called Group of 77 non-aligned nations, although that's really about 130 countries these days. The 77 is, uh, is obsolete, and it's now a misnomer. And the uh, group representing the small island countries 
all of them walked out in Barcelona because the arrogant, rich elitists, uh, <clears throat> in particular the Eurogarchs and Eurocrats, but also the Obama uh, elitists uh, and other wealthy countries, uh, were not offering any de development aid to uh, to the Africans. And of course, that is the entire point. If you have cap and trade, carbon tax, you've got to remember that the U.S. Uh, agricultural exports are the basis of the world market in wheat, in corn, in sugar, and to some extent in rice. This is also important. Uh, and if you impose this carbon tax on the U.S., one of the most immediately destructive consequences is that you will approximately double the export price of the U.S. wheat, corn, rice, uh, sugar, and other things. So that's genocide. That will take out of the one billion or so people largely in Africa that are on the verge of starvation, it will push them over. So there are lots of people in the world angry about this who want to reject it, and more power to them. They should reject it. And don't let them come back then in 2010. I think there's going to be a, con a conference in Mexico City where they're going to keep trying. Okay, so the Copenhagen conference is now set to fail. Let's not get overconfident. We want it to fail. The... Uh, report we have is that Obama is engaged in desperate last-minute secret diplomacy uh, to try to get some kind of a face-saving interim compromise for these elitists, Malthusian ghouls, vampires, and, uh, and Eurogarchs and Eurocrats, and imperialists, too, because that's the main point. The, the secret meeting occurred at the White House between Obama and an unnamed European diplomat taking a leading role in this Copenhagen monstrosity of Malthusianism and genocide. Uh, so they're trying to work out an interim accord so they can show something as a as a fig leaf. Now I take it that would be this guy Boer, B O E R, who is the Eurocrat Eurogarch, who is the manager of this. Remember that the plan was to have a U.S. cap and trade carbon monstrosity passed by the time of Copenhagen that would then be used to beat the other countries over the head, mainly to beat China and India over the head, because those are the two countries that say no, no thanks to being strangled under this carbon dictatorship so dear to the heart of the charlatan Al Gore, whom has been exposed once again on the uh, Infowars.com website as uh, basically fabricating, manufacturing, plagiarizing, and otherwise faking the evidence. Uh, the other thing is that we've got some of those German lemmings that came out for Barkey during the campaign. Remember, we had 200,000 German lemmings at the Brandenburg Gate. What a day of shame for Germany. Der Spiegel now has an editorial, the main uh, sort of left of center news magazine, uh, left o uh, Eurogark magazine in Germany, that Obama has betrayed the cause that he didn't tell the truth to Europeans. He promised that he would force through a global cap-and-trade, and now he hasn't done it. So the green fanatics are getting disenchanted with Obama, another big flaw now emerging in Obama's coalition. There's also a fight between the Indian uh, uh, environmental minister and the uh, U.S. Uh, quackademic community, because he says the, the glaciers in the Himalayas are not shrinking that much, and the U.S. quackademic Malthusians say, oh, no, you must be mistaken. The global warming is is everywhere. So this is all happening. Now, shifting to economics per se, 500,000 new unemployment claims again this week, 500,000 plus. So the depression rolls on. The interesting news this week is the Geithner and Bernanke and Summers trio under heavy attack. And we'll talk about that. I guess we're going to talk about that in the second segment of our uh, second hour here. We're going to try to go to Phil Berg and get a report on the uh, birth certificate interview. We'll be back in a minute.